welcome to the Radio Theology Podcast with Pastor Darren Earlywine, where you'll hear inspiring stories of people just like you, living out who they were born to be. Here's Pastor Darren. It's time for another episode of the Born to Be Podcast, and it's another Activate in the edition of the podcast. This year, we're really excited about our partnership with uh, the Fraternal Benefits side, Thriving Financial, and what they're doing with Activate Indy. Uh, they have scoured the community and found nine uh, of, of, we'll say, the best nonprofits serving our city, doing great work uh, with some very easy turnkey opportunities to get involved and serve, to give back, and to, to be a part of making a difference here in Indianapolis to truly activate uh, a movement of compassion and servanthood. And so uh, we're going to feature nine of these interviews this year on the Born to Be podcast of our, uh, our, our Activate Indy local partners. And Shepherd Community is one of those uh, partners. They're on the near east side of Indianapolis and have been for a long time. And they are working uh, and doing amazing work to break the cycle of poverty uh, on the near east side of Indianapolis. And uh, I'm stoked for us uh, today. I'm excited for you to get a chance to meet Andrew Green. Andrew's been with... Um, Shepherd for 14 years, and Andrew, you're the assistant uh, executive director there at Shepherd Community, and I'm excited to get to know you, get to know your story a little bit, be inspired by it, and let people know what's going on with Shepherd Community. But welcome to the Born to Be podcast. Yeah, great, thank you. Glad to be here. Very cool, Andrew. So let's let's dive in. We can talk about you know what what Shepherd Community does. You guys are doing uh, amazing work. You have been for a long time in Indianapolis, but. Obviously, here on the Born to Be podcast, we go, you know, a little bit, you know, below the surface of the 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 individual story of how you got to where you are, uh, and so kind of take us back to the beginning for you, uh, as you know, as a as an eight, ten, twelve year old kid, were you dreaming about helping run a, uh, you know, a a ministry that was helping break the the, the cycle of poverty in Indianapolis, or kind of where, where where does that start for you? Yeah, I wouldn't say. No, I was not dreaming about uh, running a ministry in Indianapolis. I uh, grew up in Michigan, a small town in Michigan outside of Detroit. Um, Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> and I I think the thing that when I think look back and think about growing up, it was this heart for the underdog from the beginning for me. And so that didn't turn into a dream to serve specifically in this way for quite a while, but I feel like that's a, a common thread when I look back at growing up. And I think that was just something that God planted in me kind of from the beginning and just part of my personality. And just the, I think that kind of grew into an opportunity of working with at-risk youth. Okay. And then he kind of grew that dream from there. But that was really where it started for me is just the way that he created me and that what I've Kind of learned and looked back on from this viewpoint, looking back, that's what I've noticed. Andrew, can you think of a story from your childhood that, that kind of marks that of where you started realizing that that, that desire to, to stand up for or, or to stand in the gap for the underdog? You know, sometimes I think of even just in my own family, you know, with my brothers, I felt a lot of loyalty, I think. And I think um, if there was ever a time where I felt like they might be getting picked on or somebody was, uh, they were older brothers to me, but at the same time, I just that feeling inside of me of, you know what, just don't mess with them. Don't leave. It never was anything aggressive from me, but it was just that feeling inside where I, uh, felt like I wanted to stand up for them and I hated seeing them hurting, I think. And that is, um, something again, that as, continued to mm-hmm. reverberate for me. Would you say a, a core value for you would be more more like loyalty or more like justice? Probably both of those combined, honestly. I, I'm a, a really loyal person, but it also plays itself out in the fact that uh, I'm very justice-oriented mm-hmm. and wanting to see justice for each person and especially those who don't have a voice. Yeah. I think it's interesting, Andrew, to think about just how early those those seeds were planted in, in your soul, in your heart, you know? Yeah. Uh, so many people we interview, we've done, you know, over 100 episodes of the Born to Be podcast, and I, and, and I don't think we've had one episode yet where somebody has said that, you know, what they're doing and the way they sense that God's, you know, uh, you know sense, that sense of calling they have on their life just showed up last week, you know what I mean? Or like 
sometime last summer I started having these thoughts. It's like usually right. they look back and they go, man, this has been a this has been a core value. This has been a burden. This has been something that has stirred in my soul since I was five, six, seven, eight years old. And it sounds like that's the case for you. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's something where I couldn't have identified it early on and God has grown it over time. Yeah. But when you look back on it, you see, you know what? God had created me in that way. And there's that specific, like you said, that seed was planted early on. And then it's just been really neat to see how God has then further grown it and directed it from there to where I am today. So talk to me about, Andrew, about the, the environment of the, that seed was placed in, because I'm guessing you grew up in a Christian family. Was that something that, that was that was fostered or was encouraged with uh, within your, your home growing up? Yeah, definitely. I am really grateful and thankful that I had uh, a Christian, two Christian parents and uh, brothers and a family, and it was a part. Faith was a part of our life, really, um, for as long as I can remember my whole life. And um, but it played itself out in, you know, regular church attendance and activities. But just looking back, and I think this might be something that is echoed throughout many interviews that you do as well. But there's just those those people that invest in your life as you look back on it too. And, and you see how they added a particular element to kind of who you are. And so obviously my parents were huge influences on that, the way that they served the kind of life that they created around us built on kind of that foundation mm -hmm. of the church environment, but also serving others. And I think uh, that was key for who I am today. Do you think of any other, uh, you know, uh, Maybe I think it's I think it's Jeff Goins that talks about accidental mentors. I think is the phrase he uses about you know people just along the way that they, maybe they didn't even know or maybe they did, but they you know you weren't even seeking them out, and all of a sudden you you find somebody who in somewhat of an accidental you know quote unquote way uh, is shaping and becoming a great mentor for you as far as career or just or just values and passion. Are there other folks you can think of it just off the top of your your head? Yeah, I think in uh, high school I was a part of a traveling singing group that was connected to uh, a couple of different, actually our church denomination. And right so on. kind of Southeast Michigan. What was the group uh, called? It was called Teens for Christ. Nice. And um, what kind so, of music did you guys sing? Uh, your typical kind of worship music. Yeah. Um, what was trendy in those days. <laughs> and uh, so being a part of that, though, the leader of that was someone, again, in the moment, in that time I knew it was great to be a part of something like that and I saw him as a leader but looking back I think just the ways that he invested and in being in that sort of community of other younger believers had a huge impact on my spiritual walk in kind of the long run and then I had another uh, another one that stands out to me was a college mentor who's um, since moved to India I did my undergrad at Spring Arbor and it was while I was there just a guy that um, invested into a number of different students. But as I was seeking out kind of a significant next step going from college into what was next, and um, he spoke a lot of truth and a lot of wisdom into that. And I, he's one of the reasons why I am where I am today. Yeah. Too. So to talk about a little bit about, here's the question I want to ask you is, is how you begin to make the, the decision to serve in, in a unique ministry like Shepherd Community. Uh, but before you answer that question, just give us, uh, you know, the, the two, three minute pitch as far as an introduction to what is Shepherd Community? What do you guys do? So uh, so our audience can kind of get their minds around that as, as you talk about how you got into that kind of work. Yeah. So Shepherd is a faith based nonprofit on the Near East side of Indianapolis. So we have a specific geographic focus on that neighborhood, those neighborhoods that surround us there, which are really about two different zip codes, the 46201, 46203 zip codes around us at Shepherd on the Near East Side there. And so we are looking to build relationships with kids and families, long-term relationships and journey with kids and families as they try to break the cycle of poverty. So a lot of the families and kids that we're working with are coming from generational poverty. And so it means it's a long-term process and it means long-term relationships are the key to seeing that happen. And so we get to to be a part of that. And we do that and we create those relationships through what we call our continuum of care, which is really programs that go basically from birth 
through college from the kid perspective and then on into career and adulthood as we talk about creating some stability with employment and financial coaching and uh, some other coaching opportunities. And so that all of those programs and that continuum really allow opportunities to create relationships no doubt. and see kids and families uh, change and break that cycle. Yeah. I love it. I mean, that's that, that's what you guys do at Shepherd Community. And I think the cool part of it, and the reason I'm glad we're able to do this series of interviews with Activate India is it's one thing to know what an organization does. I think the deeper part is to know why the people that are there do what they do. Yeah. And uh, this is a unique calling, uh, a, a much needed one. So is there a, was there kind of a, a fork in the road moment where you said, you know what, this is, this is where I want. Cause I mean, if you're in ministry, you're in nonprofit work, you could do anything, right? You could be working with, you know, AIDS orphans in Africa, or you could be doing something on it, you know, in, in a, in a more affluent kind of, you know, suburb type of ministry, you could be doing sports ministry, but all these different things. Yeah. So to be in the, in the, in the element in the vein that you're in, was there a, a fork in the road kind of moment of like, this is what I want to do. And you've talked about the core value of, 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 uh, you know, of justice and of loyalty and kind of the upbringing, but, but was there a, a, a moment where you're like, you know what, that's, that's the direction I'm going. Yeah, it, that really came for me in college as I was looking at, um, obviously you choose a major and you kind of start to choose the direction that you're going in a lot of cases or for a lot of people. I, that's what I hear that story echoed from a lot of folks. But um, I was actually planning, I had was a philosophy religion major and I was planning to go to law school. Uh, for whatever reason, the law has kind of always been an interest for me. And I thought uh, I was able to do an internship in college where I was in New York City and I was working for a nonprofit organization that taught kids about the law and how to take next steps in that direction. And I really thought that was the direction that I was going to be heading and I was going to be able to work with at-risk youth from the law perspective. And God really used a couple of different people in that internship to share that you're not going to be able to do as much as you want to do if you're just their lawyer. Hmm. So I think that they play obviously a critical part in helping kids from that perspective, but that was, God really used that to shift my mindset. And it was from there that he started to kind of develop this um, social work aspect for me. And so I actually, uh, I kept the same major, but I took some additional classes and decided to pursue my master's in social work. And okay. so that was a, a, like you said, a fork in the road yeah. moment for me where I felt like God was kind of crystallizing those next steps for me of uh, being able to pursue the working with at-risk youth and the justice kind of component and the, the work with those types of, uh, that type of population that had been early on in my life. And that's where it really started to take further yeah. root in yeah. me. So what got you to India? What got you with Shepherd Community? Because you you've been here for 14 years now. I'm yeah. sure with talking about the focus of Shepherd Community being those long-term relationships, having someone on staff, you know, in your executive role there that has been around for 14 years, you know I mean? Speaks volumes to the community, I'm sure, and to the organization itself. But how did you, how did you get connected? How did that journey start? Yeah, another uh, really cool way that God uh, opened the doors and directed that. And so I was uh, finishing my master's at University of Michigan, and my dad's roommate from college, um, they happened to be visiting him and sharing what I was up to, and I was finishing at that time and sharing what I was passionate about. And he said, oh, you know, I know a great guy that runs a ministry in Indianapolis. You should get, you should check it out. And so that was a, a first connecting point of I reached out to who is our, still our executive director, Jay Height, and just started to be able to hear a little bit more about Shepherd and talk about what I was passionate about and just really felt like God used that particular conversation and really opened the doors for a, a good timing from a timing perspective with what I was learning and kind of the academic side of things, yeah. but being able to put it into action in a place like Shepherd and in Indianapolis. And so God um, opened those doors and really led my wife and I here uh, 14 years ago. No doubt. So Andrew, I love it. That's your journey to get there. Obviously God's in that process and, and uh, what you guys are doing, making a difference here in Indianapolis with, with shepherd community, I guess maybe uh, let's jump, you know, to the, to the, the other side of the coin here and the, the kids and the families that you're serving, 
talk to me about you know the, the need there you know what what's an average an average week like in some of these kids lives and where shepherd comes in in uh, you know intersects their life talk, talk to me about about that side of the equation yeah i feel like one of the things i mo- noticed the most about um, kids and families in our neighborhood and really the effects of poverty is that there's a real lack of hope mm. in a lot of cases and so I feel like I continue to learn and think about it from that perspective of what does it look like when there's not much hope or when there's not much thinking beyond what needs to happen today. And so we see that with a lot of both kids and adults is that there's a focus on the immediate, the urgent, and sometimes it's called the the tyranny of the urgent. Mm -hmm. And that's a survival mindset and that's what is necessary. And so but it also really restricts any sort of future story Mm. for a kid especially. And so when there's no hope, there's not really a future story, it starts to change the decisions that you make, obviously, and you make um, decisions based on the immediate. And so I think that really stands out to me when I think about um, kids that come to Shepherd, kids that are in the neighborhood, kids that we get to interact with and families that we get to we get to interact with is how can we create hope for them? How can we create a future story with them? And it's an incredible opportunity and an incredible challenge at the same time. Um, But one that is just so important um, for long term. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? What does that look like practically to, uh, I mean, to create hope in a, in a family and in a kid's life? Can you give me like a, a story of some of the, maybe some of the programs or some of the, relationship building stuff you guys do that helps build hope and then, you know, maybe a, a story of, of, of how that, of impact with that. Yeah. And I think for us, most importantly, it's a foundational hope in Christ. And so we get the opportunity to introduce people to that hope. Yeah. And that's a life changer, literally in Absolutely. that perspective and from that, um, from that angle as well. And so that is foundational for everything that we do. And I, it gets to be played out in relationship, which is incredible. Um, and I think of uh, a, a kid that I've mentored for about nine years now, and I think of um, one of the story, one of the conversations that we had around just kind of where his thinking was at, and he was sharing with me, and I was recognizing um, his older siblings. Uh, three different older siblings that had all been involved in the law somehow and involved, um, incarcerated in some respect. And just realizing, and as he was sharing, that that was what he expected for himself. That was going to be a part of life for himself when he was talking with me that day as if it was going to happen at some point. And so I think of, that was just heartbreaking to me and a opportunity to share, you know what, this doesn't have to be the direction that you go and this, you can make choices that will change that direction. It it really goes towards the future story idea, but that was a part of his future story in his mind. And it really struck me that day and has continued to um, stick with me. Just that lack of hope and the expectation that that's a part of uh, that, that will be a part of his life. Thankfully it hasn't been to this point, which is uh, really exciting, but, I just um, think of those types of conversations that a lot of staff or volunteers have with kids. Um, But I also, I think of uh, just say our after school program, we're about to start, we're about to end our after school programs and launch into the summer programs. And as a part of some of those programs and from the elementary to on into the middle school and high school, the conversations that we're having about, uh, what kids are passionate about and how that might link to them going to college someday. That might link to the, a specific career. So it involves uh, creating some real practical opportunities for hope where they'll visit a college this summer. And I, for a lot of them, college has not been a conversation that's been had at home. Sure, sure. And so to start those conversations to say, hey, here's a campus right here in Indianapolis. Imagine yourself here. Let's go visit it. Let's talk about it. Let's what are you passionate about? Hey, there's a major 
that connects to what you're passionate about that God could be leading you towards mm. as you think about how to what that's going to look like beyond here. And so I think of when I talk about future story, those are opportunities, really practical examples where we get to say this, this could be you. And that's an opportunity to create hope. One of the things we talk about, Andrew, often on the podcast, and I feel like it almost comes up in, in, in every episode in, in different ways, um, is this idea of a, of a deficit of imagination. Mm. Is that so often, and whether it's because of poverty, whether it's because of, uh, it could be you know, even in affluence, it's because of great pain or lack of, you know, a lack of example. Maybe it's an environment where no one was fostering the idea of, of imagination and of dreaming and of thinking about the sure. future. And like you've hit on, you know, so well, it's like hope lives in the future, you know, and if we're not casting our, our, our vision out there, uh, a lot of times it's hard to, to, to grasp onto or, or, or allow hope to be something that motivates us. And so I think I, I see that in what you guys are doing is a lot of ways you're, you're expanding the imagination for these families of, of what could be possible as God begins to guide and direct their lives. Yeah. And um, I mean, I guess it, I mean, is that something that, that you think about often as you're maybe as you're starting a process with maybe a kid this like a, this summer, first time a kid shows up to one of your summer programs? I mean, is that something that you guys talk to your staff, your volunteers about as far as long term, what, what the goal is with with each you know uh, opportunity you get to, to impact a life there? Yeah, definitely. It's it's a built in core value. You asked me kind of about personal core values, but as an organization, creating that hope is a is a core value for who we are as an organization and so even as we bring staff or volunteers on that's part of the conversation of the opportunity that we'll have to invest in kids that way and it really guides conversation it guides what the relationship the root of the relationship that starts to form for that new kid that might show up this summer and what the opportunities are to start those conversations and invite that kid into kind of open, like you said, opening up their imagination, something that they haven't thought about before, yeah. probably because of thinking about some really Im- other really important things, but uh, things that are about survival, which are obviously important, but allowing them to, to think about that future story is yeah. a great way to open up longer term thinking and no creativity doubt. really no doubt Andrew what does it look like uh, on the the side of things one of the things you know we're excited about with activate Indy is activating Indy to get involved and make a difference to serve and there may be somebody right now that says man I don't feel like you know I've had the same they're listening to, they're listening to this episode and they're saying man I have the same heartbeat that Andrew has I've had those same thoughts but I'm currently a CPA or I'm currently you know I me mean, a barista or I'm currently a school teacher like I can't go and be the, you know, assistant executive director of a downtown ministry that like you guys. What is a way that they could get activated and get involved to come in to serve alongside you guys and make a difference? What does that look like? I love the opportunity to invite volunteers because just like you said, there's those passions, those built in core values, the way maybe they've either already been doing that or something that God's really pricking at their heart about. And the really neat thing about Shepherd is that there's all sorts of different opportunities to do that. Sometimes it's mentoring. And so I think, uh, as I kind of talked about the, the kid that I have the opportunity to hang out with, those are just, those are relationships, but the one-on-one context is huge. And so there's opportunities to get involved with a particular student or an adult in a relationship like that. And that can happen on site at Shepherd. That's sometimes the best way to get it started is coming down. Maybe it's tutoring. Maybe it's uh, playing a sport in after school, but there's those opportunities to build relationship, and we love to invite volunteers into that. And sometimes uh, you said a CPA, and so sometimes there's a particular skill or passion that a volunteer might have that we can incorporate into an existing program. So, for instance, after school program, we've got a group from Rolls-Royce that come and teach an aviation club. Oh, wow. So they're skilled in that. Obviously, they're passionate about that, but they get to come and share that with a group of elementary students, and they're building rockets in the parking lot and shooting them off, and they're taking the kids to Rolls-Royce to see some of the aviation components on site and field trips. And so 
I also think of like those small groups that can come and serve from a business or an organization that has a what they might think is something that you know I don't see how this could connect to what's happening at Shepherd, but those are awesome opportunities not only for a relationship but to share mm. what skill and passion they have. So there's those types of opportunities. Absolutely, there's some really cool things in from a neighborhood kind of community development perspective too. I didn't touch on that as much yet, but just the fact that when I talked about our neighborhood focus and those kids and families living in the neighborhood, as we talk about systemic issues like housing, there's opportunities. We've had a lot of different groups come and work from a housing perspective on doing some basic housing repairs in the neighborhood or some neighborhood cleanups, all things that relate to creating an environment within the community that where a community can really thrive. And yeah. so there's opportunities like that for volunteers. So really across the board, whether it's an individual or a group, you're interested in a one-on-one relationship. Maybe you just want to come and serve dinner. I get the opportunity on Monday nights, I serve dinner to our after-school students. And so sometimes that's a good fit for somebody to come who either uh, that's where they really feel like a little more behind the scenes or they just want to get introduced to what's happening at Shepherd. That's a really cool opportunity. We serve a ton of meals all throughout the week because That's a really important uh, need in our community. And so folks get to come and get involved that way too. Absolutely, Andrew. What I think is I love is we hit this uh, this point. It's one of the last sessions we do in our spiritual DNA workshop in the online course is we talk about that that if we're a follower of Jesus, the the, the mechanism for maturity for us is servanthood. Mm -hmm. And we're commissioned and the way that we live out our calling and become, the way we become who we are born to be is always through the avenue of servanthood. Mm. And I think sometimes we see that as like, oh, serving means I go, you know, do some manual labor. Like I got to go to Mexico and build a house or I mean, which great short term mission trips. I'm not, not, I'm not banging on those. Right. But to realize like what you're saying is like, you know, you can actually use the very thing that you're talented at, that you're maybe passionate about, that you possibly even get paid to do. Exactly. Right. And actually bring that into the life of a teen or at a family where, where, where they need that skill, the, 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 the expertise you bring could, could give them a brand new imagination of what was possible in their life. And I love it that at Shepherd, you guys are giving people the opportunity to, to jump on that on-ramp and, and actually see it make a difference. Yeah, and it's incredible to see that when it happens for a volunteer even. When they recognize just mm-hmm. what you described, that's a really neat experience to watch kind of from our side too and to invite volunteers into uh, that sort of an experience that can happen at Shepherd. Absolutely. So if you've been listening to Radio Theology, maybe listen to the Born to Be podcast often, uh, and you maybe you've taken the Spiritual DNA workshop, and you're saying, man, what's my next step? i got to figure out a way to apply this. Listen, you, you can start a new ministry. You can do something maybe with your church. But if you live in the Indianapolis area, and you want to find a way to jump into an area of our town where there is need, where you would say, man, I would know every day that my that my life, my servant, it was making a difference. It was seeing somebody's imagination change for, for what the future could be for them. Get involved in what's going on with Shepherd Community. Jump on board with what's going on with Activate Indy, activateindy.com. Uh, you can go to activateindy.com, matter of fact, and get information on all nine nonprofits, which you can get connected directly right there on how you can serve and be a part of what's going on at Shepherd Community. And, uh, you know, Andrew, as we're wrapping up now, what, what is a way that the best way, I guess, I just told them, I can go to activateindy.com, but what is another way that people can get involved in, in finding a, an opportunity to serve and to find that passion with Shepherd Community? You know, another great way to get connected at Shepherd is through our child sponsorship program. A really cool opportunity when I talked about that continuum of care and we think about those programs that are there. And again, the programs are really an opportunity to build relationship and One way that you can help support that is through the child sponsorship program. So $35 a month is an opportunity to get online. It's real easy. If you go shepherdcommunity.org, scroll down to the donate button, and then there's a child sponsorship uh, specific area there. We'd love to invite people to to do that and get connected in that way too. I mean, that could be a first start. Maybe somebody says, man, I don't know. I want to get involved. I don't know if I have the time there. But listen, do you have $35 a month to make sure these kids get the help and the programs they need and have somebody come and be able to bring hope into their future? And so- what is the 35, I mean, 35 bucks, everybody's got 35 bucks a month they could help out with. What, what does it go to specifically to help these with the kids? 
So depending on what programs they're connected into, and our goal really is multiple touches into a kid's life. And so that whole continuum is really available to a kid as they kind of progress age-wise through programs. So depending on when you get connected to a specific kid is related to what kind of program they're in. So whether that's our our preschool, our academy program, our after-school programs, our summer programs, it allows opportunity for them to participate in those specific areas. And you know that any one of our programs that you're that that kid is connected to, they're going to be hearing about how to break the cycle from a spiritual standpoint, from an academic standpoint, emotional, and uh, physical standpoint. So any of the programs, it helps to address each of those areas of need for a kid. Phenomenal. They can do that at shepherdcommunity.org. You should scroll down to the donate button, and then there's uh, just child sponsorship. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, super easy way to get involved, make a huge difference right there. Yeah, it's great if they want to hop on our website, shepherdcommunity.org is a great way to get connected or feel free to give us a call at Shepherd 375-0203. And those are both opportunities we'd love to hear more about what people are passionate about and how they'd like to get connected. We're always looking uh, to connect with individuals that way. I love it. I love it. Andrew Green from Shepherd Community Center. Listen, if you're in the Indianapolis area, you, you don't have to go across the world to make a major difference. Uh, to find a place for your passion, to truly start creating the future in our city. And that happens through relationship. It happens through servanthood. So many great opportunities at Wet Shepherd Community. Andrew, it's been an inspiration to hear your story, to see what you guys are doing at Shepherd Community. You guys get more information, once again, at activateindy.com or Shepherd's website, which is shepherdcommunity.org. Just like that. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Born to Be podcast. And remember and never forget, God has created you on purpose and for a purpose. He is near you, not far from you, and he is for you, not against you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Born to Be podcast. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Radio Theology Podcast. We'd love for you to subscribe, leave us a review, and share this episode with a friend. Talk to you next time. But until then, don't forget, God is for you, not against you. He is near to you, not far away from you. And he has created you on purpose and for a purpose. Have a great day.